Hello everyone, Shroom Reaver here, and today I am really hyped to be bringing you the start of a brand new series on the channel. Uh, as I've mentioned, it's been a while since I've recorded, so fresh start, new ideas. Um, and I've been planning this particular series for so very long, and I'm really excited to be doing it because it encompasses part of Pokemon that I really enjoy and one of the few parts of Pokemon that I would say I may be good at. <laughs> um, it's going to be a fairly long one and a lot of work goes into this. Um, I'm not sure that there's going to be a schedule for these videos per se, but we're going to do them whenever we can. Now, a few people that I know have done series or trying to do series where they use every Pokemon for something. You've got um, Frank Trose does this kind of gotta use them all. Uh, Steve Magnitude had his gotta get a kill with them all thing. Welcome to the Shroom Raver Nickname Academy. I am going to nickname every single Pokemon. It's one of the things I put a lot of work into. Um, and a lot of times you see people who are in leagues and stuff and they'll post out on Twitter like, here's my team, give me some nickname ideas. And I've become sort of a go-to for these. Uh, people like tag me and say, like, okay, what nicknames have you got for me? Because I put far too much effort into my nicknaming. Um, you can ask most anybody who knows me will know that I, I spent far too long researching Pokemon nicknames. Um, and I love doing that because nicknaming a Pokemon is what makes it personal to you. And your only limit is your own imagination. I'm not saying that I was always an expert at this. When I first picked up Pokemon Blue, oh, pro approaching 20 years ago now or something, God, that makes me feel old. Um, I picked Squirtle as my starter and I nicknamed it Waterman, which is a terrible nickname. It's an awful, awful nickname. Um, and now I sort of just put all this kind of effort and work into it. And I was, I was inspired to do this, um, this series when a very prominent YouTuber um, put out again, you're doing a league and said, give me some nicknames. And he had an Infinite and someone commented saying, nickname your Infinite Heat or Flames. I'm like, ah, oh, come on. Infinite's such a badass Pokemon. We can do better than that. Give it something, give it something imaginative, give it something creative, give it something awesome that will match how good it is. And that's what I'm saying. Like your imagination is your only limit when you're nicknaming Pokemon. Um, so I'm going to go over some of my thought process when I'm nicknaming the Pokemon that I want to use. Now, a couple of things that I'm going to try and steer clear of. There are some archetypes that people do use when nicknaming Pokemon. And if that's your bag, then more power to you. I'm not, this isn't the kind of thing where I'm saying this is how you should nickname Pokemon. Like, that's, that's not, that's not my game. Uh, whatever you want to nickname Pokemon, more power to you, you go right for it. There are a few things I'm going to try and steer clear of. Um, one of those is directly nicknaming Pokemon after the people who have made them sort of famous, as it were. Um, for example, like, if you want to go ahead and use a Gengar and nickname it Nappy, because that's his kind of thing, you go for it, that's cool. Uh, it's not something I personally like to do, but it's your thing. Similarly, if people want to use nicknames that Poketubers have also made famous, for example, once again to use the example of Nappy, if you want to go ahead and nickname your Tyranitar Drax, because that's what he does, Go for it. It's a good nickname, it has meaning to him, and I'm not saying, again, I'm using Nappy as an example, that he's huge in the community. I'm not, his nicknaming isn't bad, I actually quite like his nicknames. And if you want to use his because they're good, go right for it. It's not my jam, but that's cool. Um, some of the nicknames that I do create will use certain people that I know as part of the reason, but they won't be the direct nicknames. That's just how I like to do things. So, with that said, Shall we jump into it and uh, see exactly what kind of nicknames I use? We're going to be doing um, maybe, on average, maybe like 20 Pokemon per episode. And we're just going to go through them in order. I don't actually have every single nickname ready at the moment. At the moment, the amount of nicknames I have, I have a list. I've got 226 Pokemon nicknames um, so far. Let's just scroll back up to the top of my list. But I'm going to try and go through them and nickname every single one. So, without further ado, let's get right into this and start right at the top with the OG Bulbasaur. My nickname for Bulbasaur is going to be LCD, 
Um, and the reasoning behind this is that um, LCDs are little lights, little light bulbs that are used, um, among other reasons, they're used in backlights um, in photography when developing uh, photographs. So you've got LCDs used in backlights, uh, lights are in bulbs, and Bulbasaur has a bulb on his back, it's a backlight. So there we go with LCD. This is the kind of thing that I do. This is my kind of um, my kind of thought process going in. Some of these are more complicated than others, and that's going to be one of them. Um, again, these videos are going to be quite short, I would imagine, because um, it's just going over reasoning. And as I say, that's Bulbasaur. It doesn't take too long to go over, and that's that. So um, next up, of course, Ivysaur. Uh, my nickname for Ivysaur is going to be Urushio. I think I'm saying that right. Some of these I don't even know how to pronounce. Uh, there's going to be one coming up that I'm going to take a long time to try and get right. But Urushio the Ivysaur, uh, reasoning behind that is um, Urushio is um, a chemical component that is found in poison ivy. It's what, um, when you touch poison ivy or come into contact with it, it's what causes pain. Um, so it's a component of poison ivy, it's what makes ivy sore. <laughs> and that's that one. Um, Final one in that evolutionary line, of course, is Venusaur, and this one is called Maybe Mars. It's a very simple one. Uh, Venus is a planet, so if you're going to choose a planet, you might choose Venus or Maybe Mars. It's a bad one, but um, the, the reaction that I usually get from people when I say the, nick the nicknames like this is generally this. People just go... <sighs> and that's my crap. That's what I want. That's what I need. Um, and that one works for the Mega. A Venusaur as well, like, um, sorry, I'm a bit bummed up. Um, a lot of these are going to be consistent with the Megas or the Alolan forms. Uh, where they don't, I will move into different ones for those, but, um, maybe Mars works for both the regular form and the uh, Mega form. So, next up, number four, we have Charmander, and this is a little bit of a difficult one. Um, I should say also that a lot of these won't fit on Wi-Fi. I'm using these for seeing, like, um, which nicknames will fit on Showdown, which is an 18 character limit. Um, Charmander, I have nicknamed Isabel Collado. Um, this one technically should be female. Uh, Isabel Collado is the uh, better half or girlfriend of uh, footballer Ander Herrera. Uh, I think he still plays for Manchester United. I'm not even sure. I don't follow football all that much. But Isabel Collado is the other half of Ander Herrera. So um, she is the person who charmed Ander. <laughs> so Charmander is going to be called Isabel Collado. Uh, then we have Charmeleon, and this is another really dumb one. I've called this OP Oven, the overpowered oven, because um, Eon in England, I'm not sure if it's more widespread, is an energy provider. Um, so, you know, they'll be providing your energy for running things like your oven. Uh, but an OP oven would be too powerful, and it would possibly burn anything that was in there. So, you know, if you charred a meal using Eon, that is what you would get. And that is why we're calling Charmeleon OP Oven Char Meal Eon. There's a lot of wordplay goes into these, I love it. Um, so now we have Charizard, and this is going to be the first one where the Mega Form, or at least one of them, will differ from the base form. So, Charizard, I'm calling Komodo, because in the original games, Charizard, of course, is a fire and flying type. It looks like a dragon, and certainly in the anime, I remember it's Iris, um, thought it was a dragon type. But of course it's not, and a Komodo dragon is that big old lizard, uh, it's not a real dragon, and nor is Charizard, um, so that's why it's called Komodo. It's the same thing for the, um, the Mega version on Y, Mega Charizard Y, again, fire and flying type. Now Mega Charizard X is a little bit different because of course it is a dragon type, so for this one we've gone with East Made Easy. Uh, the reason for that is that um, the East Made Easy is the tagline for the company Blue Dragon. You may know them as the ones who do like sort of um, Eastern cuisine packaged sauces, uh, sort of like chow mein sauces and stuff like that. And yeah, it's Blue Dragon. Megazord X is a Blue Dragon. So we've gone with the tagline for that. East Made Easy is Megazord X. Now, <laughs> moving on to Squirtle. Now this is the one, I'm gonna, I've got it on my, on my, on my screen here. It's um, Nisikinakwa. I think that's how you pronounce it. Now, <laughs> Nisikanakwa is the name of a Native American military leader 
um, way, way, way many, many hundreds of years ago, uh, widely regarded as one of the finest Native American military leaders um, in existence. And he was also known as Little Turtle, which is what Squirtle is. So there we go, that is Squirtle's nickname. <laughs> um, moving on to War Turtle, this is another really stupidly uh, convoluted one. I have nicknamed this one Sorja. S-A-W-J-A-H. Now, the reason for that is, if you take that word, and I know my text isn't going to show this because it's all in capitals, but you know how you have um, an A and it's kind of, it's kind of almost like an upside down E kind of thing? So if you take, if you take that word, um, Sorja, and you turn it upside down with the capital H, what you get is what looks like the word Hermes. Now, um, Hermes is in uh, Greek mythology. Um, one of the, my favourite characters in the Disney's Hercules. And um, he's got those wings on his feet, which kind of look like War Turtle's ears. So if you flip Hermes upside down, you get that word Sorja. And if you flipped that character Hermes upside down, those little wing things would be up where his ears are, which is where they are on War Turtle. So he's kind of like an upside down Hermes. That's where the, the ears come, and that's why I've created this word Sorja, which is like Hermes <laughs> upside down. And that's where we're going with War Turtle. Um, final one, of course, in that evolutionary line is Blastoise. This is a much more simple one. It works for the Mega as well. I've always called my Blastoise is Pachabell. Uh, because of that very famous piece of music, Pachabell's Cannon. And Blastoise has a bunch of cannons. Um, Pachabell's Cannon is one of those pieces of music. You would recognise it if you heard it. Uh, I'm not going to sing it or hum it or whatever. But it's very recognisable and that's where I get the name from. So... Now we get on to those uh, early game bugs. These are quite difficult to think of names from, had a little bit of help. Uh, but Caterpie is going to be nicknamed Mrs. Mooney. Uh, the reason is, Mrs. Mooney is a character in Sweeney Todd. Um, she's prevalent in the song Worst Pies in London. And whilst um, Sweeney Todd's helper, whose name actually escaped me, the one played by Helena Bonham Carter in the uh, musical film, uh, put humans in pies, uh, Mrs. Mooney put cats in pies, so cats are uh, pie. <clears throat> Canopy was difficult to work with. I had to work with what I was given, which is why we're calling Canopy Mrs. Mooney. Um, next up, Metapod. Uh, this is called Peas to Meet You. There's a lot of wordplay going on here. Um, peas, uh, you get peas in a pod. Uh, so if you had met a pod, met a pod of peas, you would say pleased to meet you, but there's peas in there, so it's peas to meet you. It's wordplay within wordplay, and that's where we that's where I go with this. It's a bit of a complicated one. Thankfully, the next one up is Butterfree, and that is really easy. It's called Dry Toast because it's butterfree. Simple. <laughs> then we have Weedle, another one difficult to think of, and I've just called Weedle Balloon. Because if you're in a balloon, it'll raise you up, it'll get you high. And Weedle do that as well. Um, so that's Weedle. Again, not a Pokemon that you use very often, but I'm nicknaming everything, so I'm going to give it my best. Uh, similarly, a very simple one, Kakuna. I just couldn't think of anything for this, so we've just gone with the standard, classic Kakuna Matata. It's a wonderful phrase. No one uses Kakuna, um, and it's a simple one. It's a bit of a cop-out, but I couldn't think of anything better. Speaking of things that are better, oh, here we go, Beedrill. Beedrill, this is one I put a lot of research into. Beedrill, I've nicknamed DeWalt. Now, the reason behind this is, um, and this shows the level of research, stupid research I put into this. DeWalt is a brand of power drill. Now, in 2017, uh, there was a review, and all kinds of products get reviewed. Um, shampoos, various foodstuffs, uh, white products like uh, ovens and fridges and stuff, and power tools. In a review of power drills, DeWalt, as the brand, was ranked second in the UK behind a brand called Makita. So it's the second highest reviewed power drill of 2017, DeWalt. Uh, so it's not your A drill, it's kind of more your B drill. Yeah? <laughs> There's B drill. Um, so now moving into uh, those original little birds, uh, we've got Pidgey. This is one that I found quite difficult to think of one. Uh, Pidgey I've nicknamed Jules. Uh, after Jules Oliver, who is the wife of uh, the TV and celebrity chef, Jamie Oliver. Jules Oliver has a clothing line um, sold under the brand of Mother Care uh, called Little Bird. And Pidgey's a little bird. There you go. Simple. Um, followed up with Pidgeotto, who is called, and I think I'm pronouncing this right, Shug. C 
S-C-H-O-U-G, Shug. Nicknamed after Christopher Shug, who is a recording artist who I'd never heard of before, but who has a song called The Second Bird. Pidgeotto is the OG second bird. Followed up, of course, with Pidgeot. This again works for the Mega Form 2. Uh, Spinny, nicknamed after Carol Spinny, who uh, is a puppeteer. Uh, I'm, uh, he was the original puppeteer on Sesame Street, who um, who uh, moved uh, the character Big Bird. Pidgeot is the original Big Bird. Carol Spinney is the original Big Bird. There we go. Oh, I'm being contacted. Uh, next up we have Ratata. Uh, and both of these nicknames coming up are... They will work for both the uh, regular forms and the Alolan forms. Ratata is going to be called Courtney. This is after Courtney Love, who uh, featured on a song by Fall Out Boy on one of their albums. Um, I think it's the one with uh, Songs Not What You Did In The Dark, but she featured on the song Ratatat, which is kind of like Ratata. There was nothing else I could think of, and that again works for both the forms. Followed up by Raticate, who I've decided to nickname Monody. And again, this will work for both forms. Uh, Monody is a song by a group called the Fat Rat. Raticate, kind of a fat rat. So yes, that is the first 20 Pokemon. Again, we're going to go through this amount generally um, per video. So that is where we're going to finish up the first episode of the Shroom Raven Nickname Academy. So <laughs> thank you all very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed. That is a little insight into the kind of ways I nickname things. Um, Next time we'll be looking at, I think, Spearow through to Wigglytuff, still got a few nicknames to think of there, so I'm not sure when that's going to be, and also the uh, GFX that I've created, they do take a while to put together. So yeah, that's where we're going to stop here. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it, I know my nicknames are weird sometimes, um, but I'd be really interested to know your choice of nicknames for these Pokemon. Throw them in the comment section below, I always want to hear people's nicknames and their thought processes behind them and why they choose them, it brings me great pleasure to see these kind of things. Um, so yeah, not sure when the next episode will be, but that's the start. Let's see if we can continue and get every single Pokemon all the way up to zero. Oh, we're gonna go all 807, and if new Pokemon come out in Gen 8, we're gonna do them too. So, thank you all very much for watching. Do remember, every Pokemon deserves a nickname, so make sure you give them one. But with that being said, I'll see you next time. Laters.